That memory uses workspaces to store the results of our investigations. The current state of that memory is always saved, so we can work with it later. We can also export workspaces so we can open them on a different machine. Let's see how this works. We've just been profiling and analyzing an application. The workspace we have here contains several snapshots and we're in the middle of an analysis. That memory automatically saves the entire workspace. Workspaces that were open previously can be seen from the .memory home screen under recent workspaces. We can also export workspaces. This will save the entire state of that memory in a single file, which we can then share with team members, open on other computers and so on. Let's save this one. We can select a path and give it a name, but let's go with the defaults here. Now again from the home screen, we can reopen the workspace we saved. Remember we can do this on other computers as well, if we want to further analyze our profiling results elsewhere. In the list of recent workspaces, we can add annotations. This makes it easier to remember what was happening in a given workspace. Let's annotate this one here with something more meaningful. Removing snapshots can also be done here. Clicking the red X will do so. Workspaces are saved to disk by default. They do take quite a bit of disk space over time. From the .memory preferences, we can configure how long workspaces should be kept on disk. For example, we can ask .memory to remove workspaces that have not been opened after 10 days. If we do want to keep all the workspaces around, we can export them or pin them so that that memory does not automatically remove the workspace. Thank you for watching. Check out our website for more tutorials and give that memory a go.